हेलो माय डियर स्टूडियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार्म वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट और सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर थर्टी सिक्स दैट इज द फिशर इन एनो इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न द एक्ट फिशर इन एनो क्रोनिक फिशर इन एनो एंड इट्स ट्रीटमेंट एंड सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट फिशर इन एनो फिशर इन एनो इज अ वेरी कॉमन एंड पेनफुल कंडीशन फिशर ऑकर्स मोस्ट कॉमनली इन द मिड लाइन पोस्टेरियरली द लिस्ट प्रोटेक्टेड पार्ट ऑफ द एनल कैनल इन मेल्स फिशर यूजली ऑकर्स इन द मिड लाइन पोस्टेरियरली नाइंटी and much less commonly anteriorly 10% in females fissure on the midline posteriorly are slightly commoner than anteriorly that is 60 to 40 ratio the relative frequency of the anterior fissures in the females may be explained by the trauma caused by the uh, fetal head on the anterior wall of the anal canal during delivery now the etiology the predominantly posterior midline location of fissures has been explained by posterior angulation of the anal canal relative fixation of the anal canal posteriorly divergence of the fibers of the external sphincter sphincter muscles posteriorly the elliptical shape of the anal canal spasm of the internal sphincter to cause fissure in ano anal stenosis post operative hemorrhoids here is a good picture on your screen showing the anal fissure of the anal canal posteriorly at the 6 o'clock position This is the another images of the fissure in ano acute fissure in ano showing the redness around the anus anal opening anal orifice this is the another image of typical ulcers at a 6 o'clock position posteriorly to the anal orifice now secondary cause of the anal fissures are ulcerative colitis crohn's disease syphilis and tuberculosis now the pathology fissure starts proximally at the dented line so whole of the anal fissures lies in the sensitive skin of the anal canal and that is why pain is the most prominent symptoms there are two types of the fissure in ano one is a acute and second is a chronic in acute fissure in ano is a tear of the skin of the lower half of the anal canal there is a hardly any inflammatory induration or edema of its edges anal sphincter muscle spasm is always present and in chronic fissure in ano is a deep cano shaped ulcer with thick edematous margins at the upper end of the ulcer there is a hypertrophic papilla at the lower end of the ulcer there is a skin tag that is called as a sentinel pile or sentinel because it guards the anal fissure there is a characteristics information and duration of the margins spasm of internal sphincter is always present here is a good picture of the chronic fissures you can watch there is a papilla that is sentinel tag here is another picture of the fissure in ano chronic fissure in ano now the clinical features this condition is more common in women pain and bleeding are two main symptoms mostly seen between 30 to 50 years of age rare in the age due to the muscular atony hard stool while passes through the anal canal tear will occurs passage of bright streaks of blood along with the stool if the acute fissure fails to heal it will gradually develops into the deep determined ulcer this is termed as a chronic fissure in ano pain starting with the following desiccation sharp biting burning etc pain is sometimes intolerable the pain is like the cutting pain on examination a tightly closed puckered anus is almost pathognomonic of this condition because of intense pain digital examination may not be possible if allowed a chronic fissure is easily palpable by the digital examination differential diagnosis fissure in ano is differentiate with the multiple fissures carcinoma of the anus tuberculous ulcer proctalgia fugus now first the multiple fissure in the perianal region are seen as a complication of skin disease inflammatory bowel disease and anorectally sexually transmitted disease such as herpes carcinoma of the anus is very early stage may stimulate a fissure in ano if on rectal examination there is any doubt the lesion must be excised under the general anesthesia anesthesia and submitted to the histological examination and third is the tuberculous ulcer may look like a fissure in ano but will have determined age fourth is the proctal gyphex which is characterized by the severe pain arising from the rectum and occurs in irregular intervals the pain is cramp like lasts for a few minutes and disappears spontaneously it may often occurs at night 
it may even follow straining at stool on pivococcygeous muscles it is said to be seen more commonly in patients who are in under stress or anxiety a more chronic form of this disease has been termed the levator syndrome and may be associated with severe constipation it fortunately gradually subsides and requires no treatment a few enthusiastic surgeons have tried to severe the piporectalis muscles but this should not be done as it causes incontinence now the treatment of the acute ulcers that with short history usually heals with conservative treatment includes a oral pain medication second b stool softener weak bulk laxative and next is the nitric oxide is a neurotransmitter which includes relaxation of internal sphincter that is the gastrolal trinitrate is a nitric acid donor and is applied ointment on the anal canal to produce the relaxation of the internal sphincter also improves blood flow to the area which further helps in healing of fissure so, soothing agent ointment may be applied 5% halocan ointment may be introduced with a fine nozzle into the anal canal now the next point is the self dilatation is highly important as this will relax the anal musculature and resolve with healing of the fissures after 5 minute of the application of 5% halocan ointment a small anal dilator stent mark should be passed into the anal canal anal dilators are commonly made in three sizes this size small medium and large size there are three sizes this dilatation practices should be done twice a day for a m- month with lubrication injection of long acting anesthetic solution promotes little relief and has significant complications now the treatment of the chronic ulcer are conservative treatment fails and surgical management should be called for anal dilatation that is the lord's procedure of anal dilatation is the simplest method to dilate the sphincters of the anal canal any constricted band should be well stretched and the fibrosis around the fissure should be iron out second is the posterior sphincterectomy and fissurectomy the transverse fibers of the internal sphincters are divided and the floor of fissure is made smooth if the ulcer is deep with fibrotic edges the ulcer should be excised a daily hip bath and passage of an anal dilator are required third is the lateral and sphincterotomy the internal sphincter is divided away from the fissure either on the right or the left lateral position fourth is the anal advancement flap the edges of the fissure are excised and mobilized as full thickness anal skin flap these flaps are slid over the fissure and sutured in place there is a little risk of the damage to the underlying internal sphincter so there is no chance of the incontinence dear students to watch this lord's method anal dilatation posterior sphincterotomy and fissurectomy lateral sphincterotomy and anal advancement flap there are very good videos on the youtube you can watch it to clear your concepts here is the end of our surgery lecture number 36 fissure in anal thank you